Hello and welcome to the Earth is Dying Presents. Thank you so much for being patient. You know, it's a lot to put on. You know, we, we have a lot of performers tonight, which is amazing. The most amount of performers we have in one single night. So that's awesome. Our first up is going to be the Orbiters. Right on. And uh, what's, what's the first song? It's called Real Kiss, and it goes into Dancing Horses. From cool. Echo and the Bunny Men. Awesome. Oh, yeah. And that sounds like a lot of fun. I okay. can't wait to hear it. Right. And then after that, we have uh, the Joy Block from Joanne Phoenix. Or Joanne Fox. I always want to say Phoenix for some reason. I don't know why. But stick around for that. And first up is the Orbiters. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was awesome. That was a good song. So, Echo the bunny. <laughs> <laughs> next up we have the Joy Block, the Joy Block by Joanne Fox. So we're going to go to that right now. Thank you so much for joining in. Hi, my name is Joni Fox. I'm a Portland, Oregon filmmaker. I'm currently working on a documentary about Derek Reith, late percussionist with Pink Martini, who died by suicide in 2014. Our hope for the film is that it is going to begin a dialogue about suicide and suicide prevention. This coming week, there's a event happening at Thomas Lauderdale's Loft on April 4th, 2024. 5.30 to 7, it's a fundraiser for the event. It's going to be salt and straw ice cream. Luke Luke's going to do the food. And uh, Pink Martini, some of the members are going to perform. So if you're interested, please check our social media. It's Beatlore, B-E-A-T-L-O-R-E. -E. You can find us on Instagram or look for Joni Fox. And we're also on Facebook. Thanks so much. And thanks so much for watching my short film. Have a great night. Whoa. <laughs> it was so exciting and loud. This huge wave of sound. I just loved it right away. They have to dance, they have to move. It blew my mind for sure. I was just in wonder at what I got myself into. I hit what If you go to Carnival Time in Rio, there are a lot of these small groups that play in different parts of town, and they're known as blockers. So our name is Block Alegria, you know, with a with a joy block. I kept trying to think, like, how did these people end up together? There's twenty something, seventy something. There's artists. There's scientists. There's professional musicians. We're all different walks of life, and there's one thing that brings us together, and that's music. We spend three and a half hours every week together working on, you know, a very challenging activity. For me, it's fascinating that uh, they are playing very well rhythms of my country, and they are not born and raised there. So they study a lot, they dedicate themselves. When I first started in Samba, it helped me through a really difficult time. And that's when I really latched on to the idea of the joy in, in the music and that you could just lose yourself in the drumming and forget about your problems for a while. There's a lot of unintentional uh, benefits to this band, that people have no idea what they're doing for other people. I mean, I think that's one of the, the beauties of it is that they start off as strangers and you be, they become part of family in a sense. but. It is such an amazing thing to make music with other people. 
it doesn't matter how stressed I am, the two hours, three hours of playing and rehearsing in Boko really cleanses you out and you feel rejuvenated. There's something about hitting a drum that is good for the soul. So when I met Bloco Alegria about five years ago, it was a different Bloco, let's put it like that. There was no much organization uh, in the sense of they played well, but there was they didn't know how to decide things. So it was basically every rehearsal, they had a meeting to decide together. And of course, with two, it's hard to imagine with 30 people trying, you know, with different points of view. So now it's almost like a cooperative. It's totally different from being in a professional situation because all of these people just want to be there. It's a lot of working pieces. And there's a lot of people that haven't played in any bands or and it's fairly new to them. Before I joined the, the samba group uh, and began to learn samba, I played no instruments. I had no music training. Uh, I was a complete novice. You had somebody who's a new player. You surround them with strong players. Sometimes I'm amazed we get anything done. <laughs> yeah, there's, sometimes there, there's disagreements and we can have some, uh, you know, dramas with having so many members. You, want, you don't want any more time. All right, then it's probably going to be the same rhythm as, as the song before. Huh? He's singing, so you got to match up with the singer. You know, we aren't all professional, and you know, we're just trying, trying to uh, do as best as we can and improve. This band has showed me that this sort of thing is possible with 35 people. That we can have these chaotic rehearsals. When it comes down to performing, we perform. <laughs> Try to work on that. We had, I think, less than two months to put the show together. There's excitement, people get anxious, and there's also a lot of stress. And then the next show, everyone's worried about how do I look? Is my eyelash gonna fall out? I was really nervous healthy nerves, like, it's good to be a little nervous, but not too much. Crazy. It was our most successful show so far. All the diversity that's in that band, and it works, and we care about it, and we, we take care of what means a lot to us, which is the band, and we oftentimes take care of each other, and that is something to be grateful for. As a community group, we're doing this, you know, as, as a hobby, and we 
really pulled a fantastic show together. I always thought that a hobby was something very quiet, very personal, you know, collecting stamps or coins. I didn't know that a hobby could be a big communal thing. I realized the hobby can be really engrossing and exciting, big. So I had to redefine what I thought a hobby was. Black Alegria could play anywhere in Brazil. If the curtain was down and they don't see there's a bunch of gringos, as they say, they would totally say it's, this is a Brazilian band. I think it's important for the organization to continue to exist, but not only for the experience of the people within the band, but also to be able to export it and to, um, and to expose others maybe uh, in, in other regions of the country who aren't um, as, as fortunate as we are here in Portland to have um, a diverse music scene. So hopefully um, they get noticed and they get picked up and can perform at various uh, festivals and street fairs and community colleges and expose other people to this music that's very infectious and happy and powerful and has quite obviously changed a lot of these people's lives. Uh, that was super cool. Uh, I'm really excited to uh, introduce my film. Uh, I'm Luke Swanziger, writer and director of a short film, uh, the, Sp the Insomniac, colon, Spiders. Uh, this was a super cool project that fell in my lap. Uh, I was working with one of the actors who was a model for the Art of Makeup School here in Portland, Oregon, and they were in full uh, creature makeup. And uh, I was asked to make a short film uh, with that character. So I pulled together a script in three days and uh, shot this in one night. Uh, please enjoy the Insomniac Spiders. I guess at a certain point you have to ask, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. I was hoping I could just swipe right, and get lucky, and somebody could kill him for me. <laughs> Put that in your dating profile. Swipe right on me if you can kill spiders. <laughs> Seriously, is there something you can do for yourself? Like, maybe you feel like you shouldn't be afraid. Yeah, that sounds about right. I, mean, I know they're just bugs, but this, these nightmares are... Just getting insane. Seems like during the day I'm fine. I can manage when I'm awake, but as soon as I go to sleep, it's like next level anxiety. It sounds like you're being too hard on yourself. A little embarrassing that I'm so path pathologically afraid of spiders. What if you just said, I'm afraid, and that's okay? 
I'll give it a try. Great. Uh, you got this. And hey, if it doesn't work, we've got next week, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening. Of course, Jamie. Bye. Yeah, I'll get it. Kill that spider. Yeah, I'm okay with spider. Get okay. Ah! Oh, son of a bitch! I'm gonna be the winner, spider. Afraid of spiders. It's okay. I hold my fears. Fears. And this song is called Spider.
Spiders. Thanks for that, everyone. That was super cool. Thank, thank you. It's funny how that worked out. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so it's so great to. Well, uh, the next one I'm going to throw back to you all. Uh, this is a short called "Music Is a Dead Scene," and uh, <laughs> it's about people who steal from artists and get their comeuppance. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. So I filmed this uh, in my house as I was moving. It was the weekend I moved. Um, at one point, one of the the actors gets thrown against the wall, and like we noticed, the wall had like detached from the footing. It was a really shitty house. We had to move from that house. But yeah, we filmed while I was moving. Uh, this was a super fun project. Enjoy. Music is a dead scene. Come on, babe, I got the cash. 
Oh shit. What the hell have you done, Dan? Oh fuck! It's him! God damn it, Dan! What? Just run! Oh no! Are you leaving, guys? Barry! Oh, oh god! Oh Jesus! Barry! Oh god! Oh, Barry! We have to go! Oh, Barry! <laughs> We'll do an obituary. No! We'll play with a fundraiser. And all the proceeds no. will go to his family. Did Barry have family? Jesus, babe, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna cauterize this wound. You're gonna be quiet so I can focus. Oh God, that looks bad. Yeah, obviously it doesn't look good. I've never been wounded by a guitar pick before. Hey, is this supposed to look like this? I don't know, Dan. You tell me what it's supposed to look like. It looks like a weird hot dog burn. Ugh. Oh my god, we gotta get out. We're fucked. We're so fucked. We gotta get out of here. Listen, we can't run anymore. All we can do now is stand and fight. I've never seen a guitar string used like that before. There was so much blood. Ugh. Stay focused. You stole that tip jar from a goddamn folk legend. How was I supposed to know that? You never steal from the artist. You steal from the man, from the venue, from the corporate teat. For God's sake, that was an open mic night. Oh, oh God. Shh. Oh, wait, I ordered Amazon now. What? Yeah, I figured we'd need groceries, and plus they come within a two hour window. How cool is that? You're gonna have to do better than that. Yeah. Look out! I think he's in the house! I noticed, moron. Time to die, thieves. Uh, now, why is that exactly? Shoot a dart! Protect her! Damn, Trump! We don't protect shit. We're not the enemy. We're just a couple of small time thieves who stole coins from the wrong tip jar. I stand up for the downtrodden, the, the lonely solo musicians and performers. Folk heroes are a thing of the past. Where were you when Napster took all our money? When iTunes destroyed the concept of an album? Or when Spotify convinced us that by taking out the middleman we'd all be rich? You're nothing but a washed up has been. I'm Jim Dark. I stand up for the folk musicians and performers and... Folk music is dead. What about Mumford and Sons? Shut up, Dan.
This is Blake's video. Okay. All right, this is Blake's video. It's about artist burnout. Then there's a moment when you actually catch up with the storm. When the projects are all done for others and the chaos stops in your life and you realize you haven't done anything for yourself in years. You just stop. You're burnt. There's nothing in the tank. It's your time to rest, but you're not used to it. What is rest? And where does your art fit in with rest? I mean, your art, it's your art. You know, it gives you life. You don't want to get back in and just be burnt, a crisp, not producing what you want, just half of what you want. You want peace, but you want art with it. You want to approach slow, but you're nervous. You stare at the page and think how awful you felt. Your anxiety kicks in. There are just so many thoughts and you just can't. Burnout. Years and years, I've put everything into art, into my art, and into others. Project after project, never stopping, because it's my passion, right? I've got to put my all into it. In the process, though, I lost pieces of myself. Sometimes I would get so intense that I would lose sleep for weeks. Letting every single one of my thoughts be for this project. It's my passion, right? I've got to go 100%. I mean, I put everything into my art. It's me. Then you realize you're not your art, but your art is a reflection of you. And You know, it's just, it's just so easy to, um, it's so easy to get wrapped up in how, um, other people view your art, you know, it's, 
uh, on how they do art as well. It's just, uh, you know, it's always, a, you know, growing up, I've always heard about the hustle and, you know, on these millionaires and billionaires that, you know, just worked 24 seven and never stopped and got their dream, you know? And, uh, I think a lot of us are in a different situation than them, you know, maybe they got lucky or maybe they had a jump start from the beginning. Um, I know my art will always be a part of what I do, but I need to put myself first. And, you know, a part, uh, a part of me is my art. Uh, part of, part of what I love about me is that I love to be creative, but that's not every single part of me. And just don't get caught in a cycle of just endlessly trying to do something because you're just going to be burnt in the end. And then you're going to keep thinking, I just got to keep pushing, you know, but it's okay to rest. Be kind to yourself.
I just feel weird that we're starting with just this. What do you mean? But I don't know how else to start. You start how you start, you know? I'm making, I don't know, like a variation of like the chicken sandwich war, but obviously in a roll. So I'm going to be doing two different rolls, one spicy and one not spicy. I'm going to kind of figure it out as we go. <laughs> Cut. Goes. Where did I put the cat? Huh. It's already on here. What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> I'm straight tripping, y'all. There's a whole fridge right there. Basically, through this, I'm just gonna kind of wait for the soy curls to get soft. So it's, a, it's like five, ten minutes. Ow, that's hot, but I need to check it. This should all work out fine, I'm sure. I'm going to cry. I'm just kidding. Um, um, I don't think I'll need it, actually. Mm, I, I kind of want it. You want to help me fry this? Sure. All right. Ready?
I think this one could definitely be the one to enter on the chicken sandwich one. But I like the chicken in this one. It's very good. It yes. works. I definitely do. I would put this one in as well. Like okay. yes. that's like both of them good. This one will get you to win. That was so good. I did not expect it to taste like that. That one right there is easily my favorite. That was the best something right. that I've ever. <laughs> that was so good.